welcome back to the channel. Today, finally, the fall of Gondolin. Gondolin, Gondolin. No, no. The fall of Gondolin. It, you guys have asked for it. You're getting it. Today, though, it's from a channel I don't think we've reacted to. Civilization X. So, go check them out. Hit the subscribe button. It's as simple as that. Subscribe to my channel as well. And let's get into this. The fall of Gondolin. The second son of Fingolfin, Turgon the Wise, initially stood with the sons of Finarfin in One sec, Aman, let's go back who opposed there. following whoa, his whoa. uncle Feanor's the Wise. Whoa, whoa. So the house of Fingolfin. Feanor! Wait, why are all Feanor, why aren't Feanor's kids like on this? Where are they? Fingolfin. Ah, okay. Ah, man, that Erendil, what Chad? Okay, okay. Initially stood with the sons of Finarfin in Aman, who opposed following his uncle Feanor's plan for the Noldor elves to leave the Undying Lands to pursue Morgoth and the stolen Silmaril jewels in Middle Earth. However, when his father made the decision to follow Feanor, Turgon, despite his reservations, joined in the treacherous journey across the Hel Karaxe Mountains of the far north, ignoring Fingolfin's followers were forced to travel across the Hel Karaxi Mountains when Feanor betrayed them, burning his ships after crossing the Sea of Belega. The Doom of Mandos, a prophecy forewarning the Noldor that their journey to Middle Earth would only end in suffering. They ventured forth, losing many along the way, including Turgon's wife, Elenwe. When at last they arrived in Middle Earth, Feanor, High King of the Noldor, had already been slain in battle as his forces approached Angband. Fingolfin would soon become the new High King, reuniting his people and leading them to found many of the great. The Fingolfin became the High King. Okay, we know all this. Powerful cities across Beleriand, and so it would be that in the year 50 of the First Age, Turgon and his cousin Finrod were visited by the Vala Ulmo, Lord of the Waters, in Ulmo! their dreams and warned of the coming dangers they would face against Morgoth. He instructed them to seek out a secret location where they might build a new city hidden away from the vast armies of the Dark Lord. Three years later, Turgon would discover the Valley of Tumladin, surrounded by the encircling mountains. There he labored for over 60 years, building the city of Gondolin, modeling its construction after the ancient city of Tidion in Aman, the greatest city of the Noldor Elves. When its construction was complete, Turgon began to lead many of his fellow elves, including about one-third of the Noldor and three-fourths of the northern Sindar that elves to the city, utilizing secret passages few would ever learn. Gondolin oh. would become an isolated society, largely staying out of the affairs and conflicts of the rest of Beleriand, lest the enemy learn of its secret location. For 400 years, they would prosper and became the greatest elven city in Middle-earth. Yet outside of the peace and splendor of Gondolin, terrible battles were being waged as the forces of Morgoth continued to grow and attack the elves and their allies across Beleriand. After the Battle of Dagor Bragolach, Turgon's father, the High King of the Noldor, Fingolfin, was slain in a duel with Morgoth himself. The fate. No victorious in the duel. The wounds Morgoth suffered would cause. Oh, yes, of course, Fingolfin. We've done tons of videos on him. Yeah. Ah, oh, man. F's in chat. Of Gondolin and its people would then become tied with a mortal man by the name of Tuor, son of Huor. After escaping the bonds of slavery under the Easterlings, he traveled throughout Beleriand until finding a Noldor elf named Voronwe, who had survived the shipwreck. The Vala Ulmo then appeared to them, instructing them to journey to Gondolin and warn Turgan, reminding him of the Doom of Mandos prophecy and instructing him to lead his people across the sea and return to the Undying Lands. Yet when Tuor found his way to the elven city, Turgan rejected the idea of fleeing confident in the secrecy of his kingdom and their defenses. Tuor, however, was honored as an elf friend and made a lord of the city, even marrying Turgan's daughter, Idril, and forming the House of the Wing, one of the 12 great houses of Gondolin. This was the second known union between a man and elf. Ah. 
I'll have to do a video After on After the too. death of Fingolfin, his eldest son, Fingon, Turgan's older brother, would become the new High King. And despite the isolation of Gondolin, Turgan would raise an army of 10,000 elves to join with the armies of Fingon and his cousin Medros at Nirneth Arnoidia, Medros! the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. Hoping at last to defeat Morgoth by storming his fortress of Angband, the alliance of elves and men would be defeated, and Fingon killed in a duel with Gothmog, commander of the enemy forces. As the tide of battle turned against the elves, Turgon Bloody led his Easterlings. forces into retreat, able to keep their route hidden, thanks to the efforts of their human allies in the House of Hador, who covered their retreat, distracting enemy forces with their sacrifice. Though Turgon inherited the title of High King of the Noldor, he had seen enough death and withdrew his forces and support in the war, allowing for Morgoth to more easily conquer what remained of the free peoples of Beleriand. And so it was that after the fall of the great cities of the West, Gondolin was left as the only major power that might stand against the forces of darkness. And while the elves of Gondolin were fearsome warriors protected by the encircling mountains and the secrecy of their city, these advantages would be negated when Meglin, nephew of Turgon, betrayed his people and... Meglin was the nephew of Turgon. After the death of his parents, Meglin was raised by his uncle and became a lord of Gondor. City. In love with his first cousin, the daughter of Turgon, Idril, Meglin was outraged when she was given as a bride to Tuor, a mortal man. His jealousy and discontent only grew until he disobeyed the laws of Gondolin, leaving the city as he scavenged for metals. Once outside, he was captured by orcs and brought before Morgoth, who promised him the kingship of Gondolin and Idril as his bride, if only he would betray Turgon and kill Tuor. Meglin agreed to his terms, divulging the location of the secret city and offering details of their defenses. Although some sources claim Morgoth's spies had already informed him of the location of the city, he was greatly interested in learning of their defenses, and so allowed Meglin to return to Gondolin, where he began acting Traitor! like a new elf, laughing and joking with his fellows in the hopes of keeping his treachery a secret. Although the armies of Gondolin were preparing for battle, Morgoth cleverly withdrew his spies and scouts, tricking Turgon into believing the Dark Lord had cancelled his plans for invasion. And so it would be on a night of celebration, with the defenses of the city reduced and none expecting attack, that Morgoth would gather his mighty forces and march upon Gondolin. Damn! Led by Gothmog, the armies of Morgoth were vast, made up of orcs, trolls, balrogs, dragons, and new constructions known as iron monsters, crafted in the image of dragons, to house his soldiers and protect them from danger until ready to unleash them upon the enemy. The forces of Gondolin were led by the patriarchs of twelve major houses and their armies. There was Turgon and the House of the King, Tuor and the House of the Wing, Meglin and the House of the Mole, Duilin and the House of the Swallow, Egalmoth and the House of the Heavenly Ark, Penlod and the Twin Houses of the Pillar and the Tower of Snow, Galdor and the House of the Tree, Glorfindel and the House of the Golden Flower, Echthelion and the House of the Fountain, Salgant and the so House many of the legends. Heart, and finally Rog from the House of the Hammer. Salgan was an ally of Meglin, but when the battle began, he proved a coward, hiding in his bed while his men fought without him. And he got a cool name, Salgan, the House of the Harp. You don't deserve the harp. Uh, give me the House of the Hammer of Wrath. Amario and the House of the Hammer of Wrath. It just works. Of Wrath. Though the elves fought valiantly and courageously, many refusing to flee, fighting and dying to the last elf, they could not best the terrible forces brought against them. One by one, the houses fell and their leaders were killed. As the elves of Gondolin died around them, the Balrog commander, Gothmog, dueled Echthelion of the House of the Fountain. Though Echthelion was all but defeated, having lost the use of both his arms, he made one final charge, stabbing Gothmog with the spike of his helm, driving the beast into a fountain where they both drowned. In the midst of the raging battle, Meglin set his betrayal in motion, leading his army to the house of Tuor, where he planned to capture Idril and murder their son, Aedendil. However, Tuor arrived just as Meglin was preparing to act, and the houses of the Wing and Mole went to war against each other, turning the invasion into a civil war. I'm gonna have to do a video on uh, Erendil's parents. There's got to be a good one out there. Let me know in the comments down below. Tuor was able to rescue his wife and child, killing Meglin by tossing his body over the walls of the city. With the forces of Gondolin all but defeated, King Turgon instructed Tuor to lead a retreat, while the king and his men held off the armies of Morgoth. 
as Tuor and Glorfindel led the remnants of their houses and what others they could find through a secret escape constructed by Tuor, who had feared this eventuality. Turgon climbed to the top of his mighty tower, and in defiance of the armies destroying his city, he yelled out, Great is the victory of the Noldoli. Though Turgon would die defending his kingdom, the sacrifice of his men allowed for Tuor and his followers to escape the city, which was now burning behind them. As they made their escape, they were confronted by a Balrog who sought to halt their retreat. Glorfindel, one of the last living leaders of a great house, would then sacrifice himself using the weight of his body to drag the Balrog over a cliff to his doom. With this final and tragic death, the remnants of Gondolin escaped the slaughter, with Tuor leading his followers to the mouths of Sidion, where they might take refuge. But with the fall of Gondolin, last of the great elven cities of the west, Tuor and Idril knew it would only be a matter of time before even the survivors of the war would be slaughtered. And so the two set sail for the Undying Lands, determined to seek out the help of the Valar, so they might at last defeat the forces of Morgoth, who had all but completed their conquest of Beleriand. Damn. A wow. special thanks to all those who have contributed to Civilization X. You that was so good. Jeez. No wonder so many of you were like, you got to watch The Fall of Gondolin. Like, I knew about The Fall of Gondolin. I knew how it happened and stuff. But to watch it in its own single video, just... Jeez. So many heroes, though. So many heroes. I need to do a video on Tor and Elendil was her name. Um, let me know in the comments down below if they're like the best video to do there. Have you ever been so mad about the loss of your arms that you stab the freaking Balrog with your helmet? <laughs> oh, he literally headbutted a demon to death. <laughs> Balrogs riding dragons. Jeez. Yeah, they just can't. Yeah, he's right. Balrogs can't fall to death without drag dragging someone. Uh. McFarlane was the leader of the House of the Fountain, and he died in a fountain. This would make for a great movie. Mate, this would be unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, man. Damn. Morgoth, you evil bastard. <laughs> that was so good. Let me know in the comments down below what you want to see next. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye -bye. Hey, welcome to the end of the video. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much for being here. You don't understand how much I appreciate your time. Thank you for subscribing, whatever you've done to support the channel. Um, be sure to subscribe if you haven't. And if you want to support the channel further, there's a tip link in the description down below. Never feel like you have to, only if you want to. Comment down below what you want to see next on the channel. And thank you so much for being here. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.